All right, everybody, thanks for your patience and understanding. I believe I am ready to go with these top stories of the day for you from across the country. Again, everybody, my name is Pilar Arias. Thanks so much for watching News Now. We are a part of Fox10Phoenix.com. So what does that mean? That means we're located right here in Phoenix, Arizona. But we don't just cover Phoenix News, Arizona News, West Coast News. We cover news anywhere we can get it. Anywhere we've got a live feed, live camera, whether it's an event, it's breaking news that you need to know about, it's traffic related, it's weather related, it's international affairs, it's politics. We've got you covered right here on News Now. That's just how it is. We stream 13 hours a day from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Arizona. Arizona time. So happy to be here with you. Me, Mike Page, Christy Larson. We are now a three person News Now team, and it is such an honor and a pleasure to be with you each and every day, Monday through Friday. And as far as I know, the only day there isn't News Now is Christmas Day. So you pretty much get us all year, right? <laughs> all right. So this first top story, it's the one that a lot of you have been talking about ever since I talked about it at the end of News Now on Fox 10 Extra with Mike Page. By the way, that's Channel 45, Cable 9. 10 a.m. to noon every day, Monday through Friday, that is. All right, so let's get to it. It's in Ohio about a 79-year-old woman who was sentenced to 10 days in jail for feeding stray cats. So why? What happened? Let's get the details. It began with me feeding the stray kitties. Nancy Segula lives on Havana Road in Garfield Heights. I used to have a neighbor that had uh, a couple of cats and he moved away. And when he moved away, he left the cats. Segula says the cats started showing up on her back porch. I would always feed them and take care of them because I was worried about them and I'm a cat lover. And, and then once my neighbors around here started being unhappy about it, then they called the animal warden. Nancy received her first citation in 2017 and then a couple more. Total four. But her latest citation required her to appear before Magistrate Jeffrey Short last week. Scared and nervous. Who sentenced her to 10 days in the Cuyahoga County Jail. I couldn't believe my mom was telling me that for what she's doing out here, feeding some stray animals, she gets 10 days in the county jail. I, I couldn't believe it. Nancy's family was horrified. I'm sure people hear of the things that happen downtown in that jail. Not a lot of good things at all. And they're going to let my 79-year-old mother go there? In Garfield Heights, it is illegal to feed stray dogs and cats under Ordinance 505-23. However, Nancy's family does not believe the punishment fits the crime. I understand my mother has broken the law repeatedly with this, and that is along Garfield Heights. But uh, it, it should have been reviewed individually. Why would you send the 79-year-old lady to jail just for feeding cats? That it's too much of a sentence for me for what I'm doing when there are so many other people out there that do so many bad things. In Garfield Heights, Melissa Reed. Fox 8 News. All right, that story there, getting a lot of you talking on our YouTube chat. We're bringing it right back out here to Phoenix, Arizona. Look how gorgeous and green it looks out there from all the springtime rain we got. Now we can use some summer monsoon rain. We've only seen a little bit of activity last week. I believe it was on the 22nd, so eight days ago. We would like to see some more Mother Nature. We would like some more monsoon activity, please. All right, the reason I'm bringing you out to Phoenix is because this next top story I have for you from our very own Linda Williams here at Fox 10 about a school becoming a migrant shelter. The Welcome Center took in its first asylum seekers Friday. 30 of them spent the night, got their meals here, and then were on their way to sponsors. Uh, all of these families have sponsors somewhere in the U.S., and so we're working with them to book their air travel or their bus travel to their families. But in the meantime, they need a place to stay. The Ann Ott Elementary School became that place when the IRC, the International Rescue Committee of Arizona, and other groups joined together as the crisis on the southern border continued to grow. Earlier this year, though, we saw, you know, many families that were being dropped off at the Greyhound bus station where they didn't have access to food or overnight shelter, telephones, money, being able to speak the language. The IRC partner with St. Vincent de Paul to convert the school into the Welcome Center. They have a six-month lease and have plans to increase their current capacity, which is at 70 people, to 277 people. How are people reacting to the new center? 
They have a few neighbors in this area near 16th Street and the freeway. We found people are generally in support. Uh, and, you know, again, the this is entirely privately funded. And so the reason this exists is because of the generosity of the Phoenix community. Prescott says they still need donations and volunteers. We have more information at fox10phoenix.com. All right, that was our very own Linda Williams. Unfortunately, I just cut her off there. You know, we control everything here on the News Now set, and we listen to the entire broadcast. But sometimes when we think a story's ending, we just clip the tail end off there. But again, our very own Linda Williams from right here at Fox 10 Phoenix reporting. All right, let's see those hands up emojis if you like to camp. If you just sent a hands up emoji on the YouTube chat, do you know about bear safety when you're camping? We're going to head to Colorado to get some tips. It's no secret we share our state with an abundance of wildlife. We have thriving wildlife populations. Encounters making headlines recently. A mountain lion spotted in a Lakewood backyard, a bear trying to make off with a dumpster and lions. This year we have seen a lot of bear activity. So much so, Colorado Parks and Wildlife urging campers in Boulder, Clear Creek, and Larimer counties to take extra precautions. It has seen bears around campsites, getting into tents, getting into trash at, at campgrounds. Take care of your stuff. Experienced campers like Kenneth know to keep food and anything with a scent locked away. If you're cooking, wash your hands, wash your clothes, change clothes. And it's not just food or trash the bears are attracted to. Bears can smell things like toothpaste or chapstick for up to five miles away. You want to keep this far away from your campsite, so probably at least 150, 200 yards. With reports of bears even checking out tents, wildlife officials say campers should think about getting bear-proof containers. But it's going to secure your food anything was sent so that a bear can't get it and get to a reward. Coming to a campsite prepared. Is bear pepper spray and an air horn. Could make all the difference. Lisa D'Souza, Fox 31. Did Lisa just say that bears can smell chapstick and toothpaste up to five miles away? Frightening, maybe just a little bit? Yeah. I have not been camping in a while, but I do love the great outdoors. I would much rather get some physical activity, some exercise in outside, such as like hiking and biking, than being in a gym on a treadmill or the like. All right, we've got two health-related stories for you next here on News Now, and that's right, it's from the same Dr. Joette Giovinko providing us the details. This first one is about cardiovascular risk in women. Measuring a woman's pulse waves may be a better predictor of cardiovascular health than a blood pressure. Pulse waves are made up of five harmonic notes that special devices can hear when listening to the arteries. Similar to musical instruments, the same note played by a clarinet sounds very different than that of a violin. The devices are able to pick up those differences, but what those differences mean are still being investigated. In this particular study, researchers used the artery in the wrist, the same one often used to check your pulse. Pulse waves were checked in pre- and postmenopausal women with no history of heart problems. They found changes in two of those harmonic notes. It was a better predictor of heart attacks and heart failure than blood pressure measurements. Other findings were that menopause doesn't change blood pressure, but it can increase cardiovascular risk as seen in changes in the pulse waves. And when it came to blood pressure, body mass index was the largest risk factor for hypertension. And age only affects systolic blood pressure. That's the top number in your reading. Findings were presented at the American Heart Association Cardiovascular Scientific Session. For your Fox Medical Team, I'm Dr. Joette Giovinko. All right, taking a live look now with the big board Dow Jones Industrial, how the stock market is doing. You heard Mike Page call it a pretty flat day there. Looks a little frightening with nothing but red, but we're still only down about 27 points for the day. So, yeah, flat is a pretty good word to describe it. All right, well, the doctor is back to talk to us about hair health and potential damage caused by products. I know I certainly need to pay attention to this next top story. When it comes to hair, more women are choosing to go natural. It's an option that may be due to time, choice, or medical reasons. Some straighteners contain lye, the same chemical you use to unplug a clogged drain. They work by breaking and rearranging chemical bonds in the hair. But left on too long or used inappropriately, they can burn the scalp or damage the hair. When hair follicles are damaged over time, that can lead to hair loss. 
Products can also worsen inflammation in the scalp, conditions like eczema, psoriasis, or autoimmune disorders like lupus. Going natural isn't an easy process for women with thick, coarse hair. Some opt to cut it, but for others it can take a couple of years. But if you are experiencing scalp, scaling, itching, redness, or hair loss, seeing a dermatologist that specializes in hair can help you treat it and put you back on track to healthier hair. For your Fox Medical Team, I'm Dr. Joette Chiavinko. All right, definitely learned some lessons there in regards to hair. Tracy Carrasco is here with this final top story. You want to take a guess as to what it is? That's right, it's Business Briefs. Another major data breach is hitting consumers' wallets. Capital One says personal information belonging to about 100 million people applying for a credit card was stolen. The company says a hacker broke into a database containing details like home addresses and birth dates. Investigators say thousands of social security numbers and bank account numbers were also stolen. A suspect has been arrested in Seattle by the FBI. Delivery drivers confess a new survey conducted by restaurant food supplier U.S. Foods finds 28% of them say they nibble on customer food before it hits the door. Researchers found 80% of customers that receive food deliveries have suspected a delivery guy or gal of taking food. And about half of delivery folks say they're tempted to dig in just by the smell of the meat.